All right, I think that's more than enough Champions League. Uh, there is uh, other stuff going on, like the Europa League. And more importantly, there's quick hits. Let's go, Gab. Manchester United were 5-0 up from the first leg, and it's no surprise that they advanced. But Jules, uh, far more interesting to many is the Jaden Sancho saga. This is a great story. I mean, we've known that he's, the, he's been the priority for weeks and weeks. He's all agreed with United. It was all down to United and Dortmund to find an agreement. No one said that would be easy, and especially in the current context. But if someone sets a price for whatever you want to buy, a car, a house, a player... <laughs> uh, so wait, so, so those stories you know, you're putting out to local journalists saying like, well, you, Dortmund need to be realistic. You're what not does that board. even mean? I don't understand. What does that even mean? Tell me. What, what does realistic I, mean means in a transfer form? I'll tell you. It means absolutely nothing. Okay. Dortmund can do whatever they want. They can set whatever price they want. United get to make the offer. That's how it works in a free market. The only thing I would say about Dortmund, the only thing that would change that if you're Dortmund is if you've budgeted for Sancho to go, which apparently they haven't done, if you're concerned that with Jude Bellingham coming in as well, you know, you might not have enough minutes out there and you've got to get Gio Reyna playing and stuff. And what, and you know, what about Hazard and Brands? And Hazard and Brands. So and, what's the problem? So it's not like if suddenly they had no wingers at all. No, 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 no. But I'm saying is like if they have too many guys all of a sudden, yeah, potentially. But. Or if Sancho says, screw this, I'm off. I, I want to go, whatever. And then Sancho becomes a problem. We've had yeah, no indication he's going to do no, that. No, exactly. And I By think, way, I think right. if the price is 100 million, you, you, you might find a way of 80 plus 20 somehow, and yeah. which was, everybody does. But don't expect them to cut the price by half just because the pandemic happened. My favorite part of this is that if you're uh, Manchester City, you're going to get... Uh, you're going to get a cut of the profit. I think the Times reporting 15 million. So obviously, they want the price to be as high as possible. Yeah. Uh, staying in the Europa League Inter, Bill Getafe 2 0 and confirmed that Alexis Sanchez will be staying in Milan. Gab, does this mean that Antonio Conte's runs yielded results? And is it true that Sanchez took a pay cut? Well, yeah, obviously. He had to, he had on, to take man. a He had to take a pay cut. It's true to a point in the sense that Sanchez is going to take advantage of um, sort of this new law that was passed to attract foreign talent. Uh, in Italy, not just in football. It's a bit like the Beckham law at the time. Yeah, it's not meant yeah. for football, but football takes advantage of it. So uh, he's going to end up making around about 240 grand a week, which is less than what he was making before. But he gets an extra year yes, on his deal on top of exactly. that. United end up saving themselves something in excess, I think, a in excess of 50 million pounds over yeah. these two seasons. So it's addition by, subtra by subtraction if you're, if you're United. So it's a good deal for them. Um, Inter, that was nervy against Hitafe. Hitafe physical, missed the, missing a penalty. Started well as well, yeah. Started Hitafe. well. Mm. Some big calls, dropping screen ER for, for Godin. I don't know. I think we'll find out later. I don't think this has anything to do with um, the performance, has anything to do with Conte's rant. That, those, that situation, those issues will still need to be resolved when Inter season is over. Yeah, I agree, man. France football, the folks who hand out the Ballon d'Or, except, of course, this year, because since they <laughs> decided the pandemic made it not worth doing, um, they report that Cristiano Ronaldo was pining for Paris Saint-Germain at some point, and that he's not unhappy in Turin, but he's not happy either. Yeah. What do you think? Is this some sort of French existentialist BS? I don't know. BS? I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't know where that's coming from. I mean, if Ronaldo wanted to play for PSG, he missed the train, because a couple of times... They had long chat with Jorge Mendes. They tried to get him twice from Real Madrid. It didn't really happen for various reasons. One, because he was really happy. And two, because I guess Real Madrid is the biggest club in the world. So why would you leave Real Madrid at your peak to go to Paris Saint-Germain? But now he's 35. He's more towards the end of the career than to the beginning. They have Neymar and Mbappe, who are more the future than Cristiano Ronaldo is, really. So it, make, it would make no sense and for it's them not to viable even try. Economically and financially, at all. Yeah. with FFP, even without FFP, they just can't. You know, even even in Paris with with the Qatari owners, money don't grow on trees. So uh, this one. It just seems odd to write the story. Yeah, it's really. It's weird. just an odd story to write. Ike Casillas has announced his retirement from football. Gab, you wrote about him on the website. Legend of the game, right? Absolute legend of the game. Um, it's 167 caps for Spain. He's the second most appearances all time for Real Madrid. What struck me about him is that this is a guy whose career began like this, on a total yeah. upward trajectory. And then he's had a whole bunch of, 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 of setbacks. Of He gets hit, but he gets back, back, he gets yeah. back up. That, that is the point. I made and it's weird it's weird to think that you know in his early 30s when you're supposed to be at the top of your game if you're a goalkeeper probably wasn't on the level he was at 
he was at before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throughout, he's been an absolute cl- uh, class act. He had the balls to take on Jose Mourinho um, and paid a stiff price for it. Um, reinvented himself late in his career at Porto. Suffered, of course, with uh, uh, that, that, I think which effectively ended attack, his yeah. career with a heart attack. Um, but a real gentleman. And the one thing I'm happy about is it looks like it's been reported in Spain that you know there will be some role for him at Real Madrid. There should um, be. Yeah, he deserves that. The, it's, I think it's the least he deserves because yeah. he's been, as a person, I think he's been a class act throughout. And I always remember him coming on in the uh, Champions League final in Glasgow. This is after he'd already won a Champions League as a starter. Then he gets dropped. Then he comes in. He watches by, uh, Zinedine Zidane score that goal from the yeah. bench. And then Cesar gets hurt. He comes on and he makes two huge kick saves uh, at the end to keep it out. Um, I don't know. A class act, and I'm glad he's not going away. Willian, of course, is leaving Chelsea on a free transfer. <laughs> and he's been strongly linked to Arsenal, um, as has, weirdly, Philippe Coutinho. Now, I think these two guys have something in common, and it's not just the fact that they're both Brazilian, right? You're right, Gab. I mean, Kia They have the Jorabshan. same friends, yeah? Yeah, they're very <laughs> friends, and they have the same agent in Kia Jorabshan. I believe the, the Willian deal is, is, is pretty much done. You could always... I think it's... it's Three it's years? Good, yeah, it's a good debate. He turns 32 later this month. Is it is it too... Too, too long of a deal. Let's not forget yes. there was a time when Arsene Wenger was there, would only give a one year deal to the over 30s. Now you give three years to a 32, you will give probably three years to Obama Young, who's. I, I don't who's think 31. you can do that, Jules. I don't, I mean, I don't understand the logic here. When you're in this situation, you've asked players to take a pay cut and everything. You're committing. I mean, William ended the season very well. Yeah, yeah, he played really well since the restart. But the fact of the matter is, William, Albama Young, Lacazette, you know, all. Alba, Alba 32, like I said, I think will turn 30 soon. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, you're going to have to renew his contract or sell him as well. Yeah. I mean, and you've got kids. You've, you've got Saka. You've got, uh, you, you've got Martinelli. You've got Eddie and Ketcha. I don't see you're rebuilding. I don't see the logic adding all these veterans. It's almost no, like they learned no, nothing from the Ozil Mikatarian situation. Oh, by the way, you've got Mikatarian too. Yeah. I mean, David, David Luiz, I, th- I, th- I think. The, and David Luiz. Too. Yeah, but David, I think the, the influence that David Luiz had on the younger players and that dressing room was very, was very important. And maybe they think William. Well, let's talk same. about the forwards. But what, what you did with David Luiz is you gave him one plus one, which I thought was the right thing to do at the time. Last summer, do we think William so, might be one plus one or two? No, plus one? I don't think so. I, I don't even think he's a two plus one. So you've changed. You know, you you had one one way of doing things with with the older players. Then you change completely to give a, a very good contract to someone thirty two. Uh, Let, let's hope that it works for them and for Coutinho. No, I mean they tried last summer. They tried again in January. Arsenal said no both times. Unless I, Ozil leaves, I don't. Even if Ozil leaves, and I don't think he will anyway, I don't see how this one can happen. I, I wonder if William signing sort of foreshadows either Lacazette or Abba leaving. Maybe. I think it would be crazy to sell Lacazette, 100%. Unai Emery is now in charge of Villarreal, and reportedly he'd love to be reunited with your boy, Matteo Guendouzi. <laughs> your thoughts, Jules? Yeah, I mean, I can see, I can see why they had a, a very close relationship. He, he already wanted him in PSG, then he got him at Arsenal. I think uh, personality-wise, they look so different. <laughs> yeah. They look so different. They look so different, but he he gave you he gave he, he gave him a very good first season at Arsenal, and I, yeah, I think there's a lot of trust between them, and and I think I think La Liga and Villarreal could could work for Matteo. I really do. I think. You know, Villarreal will play in the Europa League next season. They had you a very won't get as much for him as you maybe should. So maybe you think about loan loaning him to get him playing time. If I think so, I think yeah. that's the idea. You bought him for eight million euros. Uh, Arsenal did from Lorient. You, I don't think you would get, especially not from Villarreal, get the no. money that you would hope for. So a loan, maybe with an option to buy, maybe not. You would see, but. Uh, something has to happen there. Either he has to make peace with Arteta and come back with Arsenal with a much better positive attitude or he goes somewhere else and, and has a season on loan. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.